so it's recorded. Um, so here's the deal. You're going to be predicting double displacement reactions, but from now on, it's not just it always occurs. Um, starting today, sometimes the double displacement reaction does not go forward. Now, what that means for you uh, is not a grand complicated thing, and like I said, we're splitting it apart into two days. But in general, it just means sometimes there's no reaction. And it's, it's very similar to single displacement. The only difference is, to figure this out, you have to go through and do the whole reaction before you actually can determine if, it is a, if there is a reaction or not. So it kind of defeats the purpose, but whatever. Um, to do this, though, first thing we have to do is understand solubility. Now, this is the new part. So let's think about this, NaCl. Now, when you see NaCl, you know that's salt. You can put it in the water, you know it's going to dissolve. Like, when you think of the word solubility, like the warm-up question, or, or dissolving, what, is that, like, what does that mean to you? Honestly, someone, what do you think? Anybody have an opinion? So solubility will dissolve in water, will mix with water. Um, I mean, yeah, solubility is more a measure of whether something will dissolve in something else. It doesn't always have to be water in our class. It always is, but it doesn't have to be. Now, what we're going to focus on today is will things dissolve in water, and if they do, how will they react? Now, we've got our sodium chloride thing here. You know that when you put it into water, it dissolves. However, I'm going to bet that if you look at this little wrapper from the cheese package I ate this morning, um, that was meant to be funny. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I, no, I just opened a new one. The rest is in the fridge back there. Because um, it's protein in the morning. Now, um, is that going to dissolve if I put it in a beaker of water? No. You know that, you know, this is like that, the, the plastic wrapper stuff, it doesn't dissolve in water. You know that because it's not soluble in water. You just know, inherently, you can tell. But with certain chemical compounds, uh, you probably don't know. So we have a way of figuring that out. But before we even get into that, let's talk about how they dissolve. So sodium chloride. Let's say you take an atom, or pardon me, a compound of sodium chloride, and you stick it in a beaker of H2O. So you put it in there. Here's what happens. It breaks apart into sodium ion and the chlorine ion. Like it, it completely dissociates, breaks apart into those ions. Now, it's no longer sodium chloride. It's a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. Okay? Heck, in this water bottle, there's sodium and there's probably some a little bit of chlorine. Not, a, not much at all. It's not salt water, but there's probably a little bit. And in the water you get out of your tap, there's all sorts of dissolved minerals, just like this, into their ionic form. Now, this is actually like how things dissolve. Um, it's, it's obviously far more complicated. It has to do with the polarity of water. Like, remember how we said water has a polar, has a positive end and a negative end? So the way it works, the water actually, the, the, the negative ends of the water molecules surround the positive here, and they, like, pull it away. And then on the other side, the positive ends surround the negative end and pull it away. It's, you'll get into it in a lot more depth than AP Chem, but that's just, that's the general concept. Um, now, what I would like you to do is, is write down, I guess, uh, the definition of dissolving. I mean... We got rid of the PowerPoint, and we're just doing this because it's a little bit faster and saves you a lot of excessive writing. So, when compounds... break apart into their respective ions in water or solution, honestly. It doesn't always have to be water. Um, the fancy term for this is dissociation, just so you know. So if I ever say something dissociates, it's the same thing. As far as you're concerned, it means exactly the same thing. So that's, that's dissolving. That's exactly what it is. You put something into water, breaks apart, very straightforward. Questions on that? Oh, okay. Um, so, so you look at the chart, you've got, uh, this chart is pretty handy. It's, there's these things called solubility rules, which tell you 
right? What compounds dissolve in water, what don't. Uh, this chart, though, allows you to basically not have to memorize those rules yet. I mean, again, when you take AP Chem, you do, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, now, let's actually sort of apply this to something. And I'll explain to you how to use it and everything. But first off, let's look at this formula. So you've got Li2CO3. That's lithium carbonate. Now, the way this chart works, you're going to look up lithium, and you're going to look up carbonate. So you go through and you, you actually sort of like figure out where they intersect. So carbonate's up here, lithium. So you get the fact that it is aqueous. Now, do you remember what aqueous means? So it means that it's dissolved in water. So that means it's dissociated. Now, since this is aqueous, here's how this actually works. So lithium would break apart into Li plus and Li plus, and then you would have CO3 with a negative 2 just sort of like floating around. That's how it would dissolve. Do you understand why there's two lithiums there? Yes. Because you, you had two. Now, there's one other thing to notice. You see how CO3 stays together? So polyatomic ions never break apart in solution. OK? They always stay together, at least as far as you're concerned again. Because that's the charge on carbonate. Like if you look CO3 up, that's the charge. So that's, that's a really important thing to, to know and to remember. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make a key for the chart. Um, many times there is, at least I remember when I first looked at this chart, I got confused, but maybe you won't. So the solubility chart. Now, we've identified AQ. There's a lot of those on there. What does it stand for again? Aqueous. So you've got AQ, it's aqueous. Now, here's what I want you to write for this. I would write this, I don't know, in your notes or on the back of your chart or something. I don't care. So the AQ means that something's dissolved in water or it's soluble. Okay? For a long time, I would always have to tell myself when I looked at this chart that the S did not mean soluble. Because a lot of the times we refer to stuff, is it soluble or insoluble? That's like a major vocabulary thing we're going to deal with. So since we know the S does not mean soluble, what do you think the S means? Solid. Yes, it means solid. So solid equals uh, solid. This will, uh, will not dissolve, and it's non-soluble. Well, yeah, that's the whole point. That's why we say that. So this will not dissolve. Now, this is your key. Notice we don't have gases. We don't have liquids on here. We don't care about that. We just care when we put a compound into water, will it break apart or not? That's all we are concerned with. OK? So questions on the use of this chart, I guess, just, just how it would physically work. OK. Uh, the only other thing, like you see where there's like a couple dashes and blank spots and stuff? Don't worry about those compounds because you're never going to be given those. They don't form as far as we're concerned. There's a reason they're blank, okay? So, now, how does this actually, like, now we'll get to the point of, like, why does this matter? So now we're going to use this for double displacement prediction. So, uh, like I said at the beginning, not all double displacement reactions happen. You know how you went through with a single displacement, you used the activity series, and you were like, oh, is this thing higher or lower or whatever? Does a reaction happen? We're going to do something similar, not with the activity series, but using solubility. So uh, what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to write this on another page. I'm going to turn it sideways because, you know, my handwriting is not the world's most spectacular thing ever. I'll do it this way. So here's a reaction. What I would like you to do is go through and identify using your solubility chart that I just gave you 
what phase each of these things are in. Like figure out whether they are solid or aqueous. Look at all four of them. So like look up Li and Br. Is it aqueous or solid? Look up Na and nitrate and aqueous or solid. So go through and really quickly just figure that out. Get used to using your chart. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. It's totally fine. Is NO3 nitrate? Yeah, NO3 is nitrate. So once you like go through and look at them, they're all aqueous. I assume you're seeing that. Yeah. And that's good. You know, that's fine. There's a reason for that. That's why we're looking at it. Now, these are all aqueous. And this type of reaction, just so you know, it would not occur. So before, I'm going to explain why, but before I explain why and forget to tell you, you should write this down. So, if there is no solid in the products then no reaction occurs and we'll put another star there because it's important so that's really important and I'll explain why and it should make sense I think actually now these are both aqueous. So lithium bromine, sodium nitrate, both aqueous things. So here's the deal. Uh, let's let's pretend we got a, you know, we're looking at a thing of aqueous solution where this is occurring. Remember, it's just going to be in like a beaker. So we've got lithium bromine. Oh, pardon me, that's negative. Uh, just sort of floating there. And then you've got Na plus NO3 negative. They're just floating there. They're just moving around. There's, there's you have to remember there's incomprehensible amount of these ions in the solution. I'm just showing you an example. Now let's say this theoretical reaction occurs. And you look at what's produced. Well you end up with Li and NO3 and they're just sort of floating there and Na and Br. I mean does that really look any different? Like if you think about this there's nothing, nothing's produced. Because do we have, I mean, any reaction take place? No. And the reason being, the products that would form are aqueous. So no product will form. Once you put them into solution, they're all re starting to react together, but they will only react if they can make something. Like if they made a solid, then that would be one thing. But basically, you see how everything is exactly the same on both sides here? Like you got lithium, you got sodium, bromine, nitrate all by themselves. It's just that way, no, nothing happens. Okay, that's why. Now let me show you uh, one other example and then we'll be, then we'll start doing some more stuff where you can ask questions, etc. more. Now, I know that's kind of out there, just hang on. So this example is a little bit more specific. So it's more like so there is your next reaction. What I would like you to do really quickly is where? The nest. The sulfur. So what I would like you to do is go through, figure out the products and the phases. For like so go through, figure out what the product should be. Yeah, what you what you've been doing for like three days. And then figure out what the phases are too, okay? 
Uh, let's go over this now. So, your products are going to be zinc sulfide plus ammonium nitrate. Now, if you were to go back and balance this, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is put a two right there. That's it. You should, yeah. Yeah, it's Okay, the Z end is like plus two, and then the S is plus two. Like, don't like. The S is negative two. Minus two. Um. So plus two, negative two, they crisscross. We simplify it to one to one, though. Like, oh. it should be ZN2, S2, I know, but we simplify it to one to one. Okay. But then should the other one be NH42 and NH32? No, because remember, when you, when you write them on the product side, you're, you're ignoring these subscripts and you're rewriting it based on what their ionic charges are. Okay, yeah, that. It doesn't matter um, which one goes first, does it? You mean like out of between these two compounds? Yeah. No, it doesn't matter at all. Now, once you get to this point, you should have gone through and found aqueous, aqueous, solid, aqueous. Hopefully you got to that point. So, what that means for you, okay, the next other major thing. Uh, if one of the products is a solid, a reaction does occur. They really won't be. You're not really ever going to have a reaction where both products are solid, at least in this type of thing. What happened to liquid? Liquid, uh, in, in double displacement, like solution reactions and stuff, I mean, you're in liquid water, so there's not really a place for it in a reaction. It's just sort of there. So when does the gas come in? Is that, that's in many other things, okay. like in lots of stuff. Now, let me show you what this means. So let's think about this reaction, and you'll see what the difference is. So let's assume we've got our, our ions just floating around. So we got zinc plus 2. You've got NO3 and NO3 negative one, negative one, you've got NH4, which is plus, NH4, which is plus, and sulfur, negative two. Can we all agree on that? Based on the way the reaction is. We got two of these because of the subscripts and stuff. All right. So, now, to the product side we go. You've still got NH4, you got plus, NH4 plus, because you've got two of them, then you've got NO3, negative 1, NO3, negative 1. Because again, you got two of them. Now, the only thing that's different here, though, you have zinc sulfide. It's a solid. It does not have an ionic charge. Now, in this example, can you see how you do not have the same thing on both sides? Because now, hang on. Because now you can look and say, well, we have certain things that are the same on both sides, but we also have stuff that is no longer the same on both sides. Okay? No, you do next. You do on Monday. On Monday you have to do this. Today I'm just showing you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Exactly. And I'll show you the picture of the precipitate for that. The thing, remember when it turned all yellow when I poured the stuff in? Yeah. That was the solid. I think she just says the same thing. Like if it's a solid, you don't separate No. I'll show you the picture again. So, so that's basically it. This is why it is different now. Okay, this is why a reaction occurs. Because something is made and it won't dissolve. 